good idea. Told and illustrated by Susan Jeffers. Yes. Wild Robin. Wild Robin, a lazy and unruly boy, longs for home after he is captured by the fairies, but must wait to be rescued by his brave and loving sister. For my mother, Alice. Robin was a wild boy, as wild as the wind across the hills. He hated everyday things like carrying water from the well. He hid when it was time to sweep the barn. For, the, for most of all, he hated tending the cows. His sister Janet was a kind girl, and she loved her wayward brother. She would sometimes eat his porridge for him and she would even help clean the barn and tend the cows. But one day, Robin was more wild than ever. He spilled his porridge on the floor, he poured water on his boots, and he refused to clean the cow barn. Even Janet lost patience with him. Well then, I'll run away, said Robin to himself. And off he went, over the windy hills, at last, Robin could run no more, and by the edge of St. Mary's Lock, he flung himself on the grass and was soon sound asleep. He did not know that the ring of moss in which he lay belonged to the fairies. The water kelpies and other elfish creatures knew, and they laughed with glee. The sun fell, and over the hills came the tinkling of tiny bridal bells. The fairies were riding over the moor. The queen stopped in the fairy ring and laid her fingers on Robin's cheek. This little mm -hmm. man shall be mine, she said. Elves, set him on a horse and take him to my castle. When Robin awoke, he found himself looking into the cold gray eyes of the queen. You are now in fairyland, she told him. Here, there is nothing to do but play and to eat to your heart's content. Everywhere Robin went, his eyes were dazzled. He soon found that indeed he could do as he liked. There was no water to be carried, no porridge to be eaten, no sweeping to be done. If the fairies had cows, they needed no tending. He was very pleased with this easy life. But one day, Robin found he was tired of having nothing to do, and he was lonely. He missed his mother and his father, and most of all, he missed Janet. There was one elf who liked to tease him with news of the human world. The elf told Robin how his mother watched by the window while his father and Janet searched for him across the hills. One night, when this elf went to spy on the human world, he did not see Janet. Finally, he found her in the hayloft. She was sobbing so bitterly for Robin that even the elf's little stone heart was touched. He showed Janet her brother in a dream, and Robin told her how she could free him. She must go to the green wood the very next night and follow this charm exactly. First let pass the milk-white steed, then let pass the brown. But you must stop the coal-black steed and pull the rider down. And then she must hold tight to the rider until she could cast her green coat over him. Oh. The next night, Janet went to the greenwood. She hid for a long time under a tree, and an eerie cavalcade wound its way through the forest. She saw the queen pass on a milk-white steed, followed by the elf on a brown one. 
Then came a shadowy figure mounted on a coal black steed. In spite of her terror, she leapt at the rider and pulled him to the ground. How horrible it was. Shape after shape writhered in her grasp, but Janet held on as she knew she must. At last, she managed to throw her green coat over him. And there was her own dear brother Robin grinning at her. As she hugged him close, she heard the angry voice of the queen. Janet, you have taken away my bonniest lad and all my company. But Wild Robin was safe. The fairies had lost their power over him forever. I'll never run away again. The end. The end. And we did no rushing at the beach. Uh, we did scary booze. We did Buchisachi Minta O.